Hello! Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to a Throne of Eldraine draft here on the channel. Before I dive in, I do want to give a huge shout-out to Wizards of the Coast. Thank you so much for giving me a free preview account and access to this early access event with a fully stocked account. I really appreciate it, and thank you so much to Wizards for that. If you want to help me continue making content and to support the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If the video gets to 50 thumbs up, I'll post another video tomorrow. So if you would like to get more content and also want to support me at the same time, that thumbs up button is a great way to do that. If you want to join our community here on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, if you have any questions, leave those in the comment section down below. Without further ado, we're going to dive right in and we're going to play this draft for as long as we can uh, until we get kicked out of by uh, the time limit on the drafts. Okie doke. So opening up this pack, uh, we see, I am going to be going very in-depth in this because it is one of my first drafts and I want to talk through the cards with you guys. Emery Lurker in the Lock is a card that if you open it, pack one, pick one, you can definitely build around it. There are multiple artifacts that you can uh, flip with this. Most notably is the Cauldron. It is one mana for a uh, artifact cauldron that you can pay three, sacrifice it to deal three, and then it goes to the graveyard, and so then you can get it back. There's a lot of artifacts in the set, and there's a decent number that are recursive, so I think Emery is a very fine first pick, and definitely a card that I'm probably going to be taking out of this pack. Looking over, we see Sage of the Falls. I think this card is okay. It's partic it's like only really a card that I'm happy to play in the blue-red draw two cards per turn deck, but in that deck, it does a decent work because you pretty much can enable it uh, your payoffs at will, uh, but I'm not going to take it super early. Similarly, uh, in a different vein, Kenrith's Transformation did not perform well for me in my last draft, even though my deck was sweet. If you'd want to see that video, I'll have a link to that in the description, and you can just find it on my channel. But Kenrith's Transformation is was a card that I thought was going to be quite good, but it ended up performing quite badly. I never wanted to use it on my opponent's creatures, and usually I was just turning a 2-1 into a 3-3, which is not really a great deal. It's like okay, but not really a great deal, so I don't think this card is really that good or a high pick. Lock Dragon, on the other hand, is a fantastic card. It works in Mono Red decks, Mono Red decks... Did I just say mono red? I said mono blue decks, mono red decks. I said mono red decks twice in a row. I'm tired. It's, it happens. But mono blue decks, mono red decks, or in blue red decks, it is definitely worth an early pick because it does really filter through your draws, does everything blue red wants to do. But I'm not going to be taking it over Emery because I do kind of want to try building around Emery and seeing how that works. Uh, I think Emery's just got a high upside and I want to try, try it out. Prize Griffin is just a very mediocre, just normal card, average card. You'll play it. Three, four flyers are solid didn't say please. I don't love this card. It's relatively easy to play around, and there's enough proactive threats or, and ways to spend your mana outside of casting spells that I don't think it's that great, though I think playing one copy in your blue decks is probably okay. Merfolk Secret Keeper, I think, is m like a solid card. I haven't actually gotten to build a deck around it, but maybe I will this time. Uh, if I get Emery, I can mill myself to get some stuff going. There's a deck that does want to mill your opponents uh, a little bit for some payoffs, so I think Merfolk's Secret Keeper could be good in that, and also just the 0-4 can really help stall the game while your blue deck reaches towards 5 mana to draw 3 cards. For Boating Fruit, I have as one of the better black commons, just a lot of value, and uh, if you can like cast this with triple black, you get a food, so that's really good as well. Negates that life loss you have, and also can fuel food payoffs. Wicked Guardian is a solid black common. I, I have not honestly not been super impressed with it. The 4-2 body is just not very good for 4 mana, even though you do draw a card, it a lot of the time is very hard to cast or get any value, and I'm not a huge fan of it. It's like, okay, it's like a solid card, but um, time will tell how good it ends up being. I think you need to build your deck around it. Crystal Slipper is like a card I'm not happy to play. Merchant of the Veil is a pretty good card, especially in the blue-red deck. Uh, works well with like, like the Lock Dragon type effect. It also can trigger all of your cards, and can even trigger them on your opponent's turn if you have six mana, but I'm not going to take it over Emery. And then Fer F Fierce Witch Stalker is a fantastic green common. I think it's worse than the Fight card. <laughs> I just had a mono green deck that I had two copies of the fight card and it was fantastic but I forget the name of the card still but Fierce Witch Stalker is a very good card as well oh it's literally right next to it Outmuscle is a fantastic green card though I would start by taking Outmuscle over Fierce Witch Stalker the card just works really well and Indestructible surprisingly is very useful like not surprisingly but it, it is very useful you, it can enable attacks like, you can kill a creature pre-combat and then attack with it still, even if it's taken, like, four or five damage. You can do some really cool things with Merrileaf Rider. Merrileaf Rider is a great combo without Muscle, because when it's indestructible, it can then eat another creature, so that's just a really nice combo to be aware of. Uh, out Muscle is just fantastic, especially if you're a very heavy green deck. And then Wildwood Tracker is just a one-mana 2-2 two, two in the right deck, but I don't really take it that highly. We're going to take the Emery, though, and see if we can build around some sweet artifact synergies. Not Weapons Rack, unfortunately. Um, moving into pick two... I think my clear pick out of this pack is Foulmire Knight. It's basically just a two-for-one every single time, and that's just very valuable. Also, blue-black is the color of mill and self-mill. Sorry, excuse me. 
and uh, Falmire Knight works really well in that. Tome Raider is like a uh, like Venerable Knight's okay. I'm just going to go through from the upper left, I guess. Venerable Knight's okay, but a lot of the time uh, you need to make sure you're curving one drop into two drop because otherwise one drops are basically just garbage two drops if you're not like curving one drop into two drop because they're just like slightly worse two drops. Um, but Venerable Knight is actually like the type of card that if you spent two mana for this, you wouldn't be like that unhappy. So it's just a very good one drop. Uh, Falmire Knight is fantastic. It's just always a two for one pretty much. You never really want to cast it for just one mana, uh, but it's a really good card. Uh, Fireborn Knight, I think, is a nice payoff for mono white, mono red, or red white, but it's not like a super high pick. It's like you can treat it like a four mana four three with like a good ability that to activate because it makes it really hard to block. It's like you not don't activate the ability very much, but the threat of activating it really does do a lot of work. Uh, but you don't really want to just play it in a non heavy requirement. I'd want at least like eleven sources to play this card, or twelve even. Uh, Silver Flame Squire is like solid but not super spectacular or anything. I think it's like an okay card, um, but not what I'm prioritizing. We already talked about that one. Tome Raider, I think, is mediocre. I think you only really want it in the blue red spell in the blue red draw two cards deck. And the reason being is that a one one just doesn't really affect the board. Like if sure, if your card is are like generating tokens like passively, that's good. But just playing a three mana one one is just so small that like even though it cantrips, it just doesn't really affect the board enough. So I'm not a huge fan of this card. Um, though it definitely can shine in the right deck. Reef Soul, premium removal, definitely the second pick out of this pack after the Foulmire Knight. Just a really good removal spell and uh, a great common. Spit and Sword Master, I've not been super impressed with it. I think it, I haven't just, I just haven't faced against a, like incredible Knights deck because in the right home, this card could do great work. But I think people are going to overplay this card and uh, yeah, I think it's just very, a solid card, but nothing special and you kind of have to have the right deck for it. Uh, the Brimstone Trebuchet, solid enough card. 1-3 is irrelevant. Statline blocks things like the Swordmaster, the Tome Raider. Can trade with Manly, Merrily Friders and things like that. There's a Merchant of the Veil. We already talked about it. Solid card. But I think I'm just definitely taking Falmire and then Reef Soul over it. Just higher power level. Merrily Friders, this is the card that has a lot of synergies. The ability to sacrifice multiple foods to this means that it works really well with things like Outmuscle. So if you make Merrily Friders into a 4-2 and your opponent has like a 2-3 and a 3-1 which is a stat line that could happen. Or in one of my previous games, they had a Smitten Swordmaster and a 3-4, and I had made Merrily Frider into a 5-3. I just sacked two foods, made it so both creatures had to block it, and then I just got a nice little use for my food out of Merrily Frider. I think this card is really good, and I think people are going to be undervaluing it. So if you are watching this video and you want to win more, just play more Merrily Friders. It's that simple. Uh, Weapons Rack, not really a playable card. Dwarven Mine is okay, but only if you're really like heavy, heavy red, like 11 or 10 or 11 mountains. But then it's pretty good, because you get a free creature along with your stuff. That's a cool-looking token, too. We're just going to take the Falmire Knight, though. Okie doke. Moving into pick three. Um, we're still early enough in the draft that I'm not feeling committed to anything. I will say that Glass Casket being an artifact is pretty sweet with Emery, because uh, you can mill it over and then cast your get glass casket which does make it a bit of a more appealing pick it's also just a very powerful card relative to, to the rest of this pack once in future is quite good but you have to be heavy green because you really want to be getting adamant on it <laughs> i keep referencing the mono green deck i had but i think that's a really good metaphor for how adamant works if you're always triggering it your cards get significantly better but in a two color deck which most of your decks are going to be you want to be playing uh like your spells and you want to be getting once in future going like um you're only going to get like turn eight or seven or things like that, so you can't plan on having them early. Um, I think Glass Casket, the synergy with Emery is good enough, and also it's just a good card. And also, I could potentially play White Black Knights. I think so. I think I'm going to take the Glass Casket here. I think it's higher higher power level than the Sanctuary, the Tempting Witch. I already talked about how Tome Raider is not super great outside of Blue Red. Uh, so I think the casket's the best picked. I think Lonesome Unicorn doesn't look great because both sides are understated, but the fact that it makes a knight is relevant. The fact that it's an adventure for adventure synergy cards matters, and the fact that you just get like like a lot of stats for one card, like even though it's expensive, you're getting a 5-5 five, five worth of stats across two bodies, and it's split up so you can spend them when they're most flex like very flexibly, so I think this card is still going to be pretty good. Youthful Knight does pretty well with like enhancement effects like equipments, combat tricks, but overall not a super high pick. Seven Dwarves, I think you can get like a little bit later. You don't really need to prioritize these, but if you end up with a couple, pretty good. Um, Red Cap Raiders, I think this card's quite nice. Like A lot of the time, it's going to function as a four mana four, three mana four, three in your aggressive decks because your opponent's not going to be able to block it. Uh, you'll just play your next creature, like your four drop, and then make Red Cap Raiders bigger and go, etc. like that. 
Twin Veil Tree Folk is a card that I think is much better than people will give it credit for, because the first half doesn't look like really worth a card, and normally four mana put two counters wouldn't be worth a card. But in this and in this, but in this set, because you're getting also a six mana six five, which is like a reasonable creature, and it's a big creature, the extra benefit of Oaken Boon is quite nice. I think. The in this format, there's a lot of small creatures. There's not like a ton of big creatures, even in green. So Two Unveiled Tree Folk just towers above everything, both physically and in stats form. Uh, so I think this card's quite nice and a little bit underrated. Wolf's Quarry performed really well for me, me in my last draft, even though I wasn't like a food deck. I didn't really care about food all that much. I had still like a couple cards that cared about food, like Merrileaf Rider and things like that. I had some equipment. I think Wolf's Quarry is just better than it looks. I think this card's going to be a solid playable in the format, even if you're not a heavy food deck, though obviously it shines in the heavy food deck. Um, Lockwain Gargoyle is not a card I'm happy to play. Just 0-3 with not much upside. Too expensive to activate. Yeah. Mystic Sanctuary is pretty decent, but I think I'm just going to take the Glass Casket, see where it takes me. Okay. Okay. I see where we're going here. Um, kind of. Into the Story is one of those cards that I don't think you need to prioritize in this set. Um, sorry, I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm not. I'll sneeze eventually, and then I'll tell you that that was the sneeze uh into the story is the type of card you don't need to prioritize because there's a card called unexplainable something it's a five mana draw three then potentially scry three in blue which makes into the story much more replaceable though you still will play it if you ever draw four cards with this and if you ever draw four cards for four mana you just feel like you did it and i yeah i think the card is still quite powerful but you don't really need to prioritize it Trail of Crumbs is fantastic in the right deck, but I don't think you want to take it early. I think you'd rather get be in the food deck first, and our current draft does not look like it's taking us down the food path at all. We're potentially looking to play white-blue artifacts, maybe black-white knights, and this card doesn't really fit in there. Um, again, Fierce Witch Stalker is a fantastic common. I think Weaselback Redcap is much better than it looks as well, just because the usually these cards cost 3 to activate, and but the fact that this is a knight and costs only 2 to activate is quite good. Witch's Cottage is quite nice, especially if I'm going to be playing some mill, self mill like Emery, I'll have more options. But I might, I don't know which color I'm going to be heavy in, whether I'm going to be heavy blue, heavy white, heavy black. So you don't really want to take these until you know which color you're going to be heavy in. Because I think you want to have at least nine of that land before you play these. Idyllic Grange is decent, similar boat to the Witch's Cottage. Um, I don't think Giant Skewer is very good. Having played against it multiple times, it always seemed terrible. Um... And I think it's just a bad card and you shouldn't be playing it. I think in this pack I'm just going to take into the story. I want to get more experience with the card. And I think it could be a key part of the deck I want to end up building here. I think it's going to be better than the Squire and the Youthful Knight. And I don't think Eye Collector is very good at all. Oh my gosh, we're going into all the stories, folks. The stories have been entered and we are in on the mill plan. I think that's kind of sick. Let's do it. I think we're just going to take into the story number two here. Like, Fairy Guide Mither's pretty good. It's going to be underrated as well. Uh, the fact of the matter is that one mana one ones are just generally bad, but this one has enough upside. It has some adventures synergy, and usually the reason one mana one ones are bad is because when you top deck them, they suck. But this one has, like, a top deck lava axe mode, because a lot of the time you'll be able to jump something, get in a big hit of damage. Um, I think that Into the Story is the pick out of this pack, followed by Corridor Monitor. This card's actually, like, really important because you need early defenses, and it shuts down, like, every two drop and a lot of the three drops, so Corridor Monitor is quite good, and I hope to get some of those, but I think the second Into the Story really solidifies me into my plan. And then for Boating Fruit, not really a card I'm going to be looking for if I already have two Into the Stories. I just kind of want that Mill card back. Um, Return to Nature I don't think is main deckable, but it's a very good sideboard card. Uh, there's some graveyard stuff, there's some enchantments, and there's artifacts, so it's got a lot of options and can usually find a mode. I don't think Ferocity of the Wild is playable. Um, just generally, the fact that it only affects attacking means that the games you fall behind is just going to do nothing. Beloved Princess, you kind of need some equipments or ways to enhance this to make it even somewhat playable, and I don't think there's enough of those to make this a good card. Roving Keep's not good. Rimrock Knight is actually quite nice. I like this card a lot, but I'm not like in that type of deck, so we're just going to take it into the story and see what happens. And now we see... There's a Once in Future. Um, we don't really need more value plays. Eye Collector's interesting just because it mills them, but I don't think we really want that. Mantle of Tides could be quite nice with these drawing effects, and it's also an artifact for Emery. Eh, eh. Oh, there's also the Prophet of the Peak for Emery. That actually seems really nice. Though I can probably get one of these later. I'm just going to pick up the mantle because it's cheap and works well with Into the Story and Emery. And now there's a Opt. There's also a Righteousness. I don't like Righteousness at all. The problem with Righteousness is when you're on defense 
and uh, your opponent just has so many more opportunities to blow you out because they could have their own combat tricks, they could have just removal, and uh, it just does not end well. This pack doesn't really have anything I want. I think I'm going to just take the opt, keep myself very open to directions I could go. I don't think red cap's good unless you have equipment. School Knocker Ogre actually has a downside because your opponent's going to hold extra lands and then um, just wreck you with, like, drawing extra cards, essentially. One moment. Oh, yeah, I am recording. Thank goodness. <laughs> I had a fear that I wasn't recording for a second. Um, Bargen's, like, a good combat trick, but I'm not even close to being in red. Oh my gosh, this is a card I must talk about. I have had so many discussions with people about Revenge of Ravens, and I think this card is unplayable. This is going to be a bit of a rant, I know it will be, but Revenge of Ravens is the type of card that everyone likes to play, and then it never does anything, and you just lose the game when you play this type of card. An aggro deck does not want Revenge of Ravens, because in an aggro deck, the fundamental philosophy you need to adhere to usually is, if I am going to be attacking my opponent, I want all of my cards to be useful in my opening hand, or so powerful that it's worth the cost. So, if I'm going to have a clunky 4-drop enchantment, it better be doing something... It better be doing something valuable for me. And Revenge of Ravens just doesn't. Like, you go... If, say, you go 2-drop, 3-drop, and then you play Revenge of Ravens, your opponent now has a window to stabilize. They play their 4-drop creature. They're not attacking you, so they're not taking damage. And then Revenge of Ravens just does nothing. If you are a control deck, you might be thinking, well, I need the life gain. But pure life gain spells are just not that useful. So if you're a control deck, you don't really care about the direct damage to your opponent. You're going to have inevitability. Maybe you're planning to mill them out. Maybe you're planning to just draw so many cards that they can't do anything. But when you have Revenge of Ravens, you... Um, when you have Revenge of Ravens, your opponent is like losing some life is losing life and you're just essentially playing like a four mana gain six life spell which is just not very good uh your opponent's just going to not attack you when it's not good for them uh if you're a mid-range deck and you're racing sure the card might do some work because then you care about the life gain and the life loss but your opponent gets to make these decisions about when they attack you so they're just not going to take damage also food is in the format there's food there's golden egg at common and every color has access to it it's just life gain sitting around so there's the thought like oh i'm going to get to the point where my opponent can never attack me again that's just not true because they'll just gain six life from the two foods they have lying around and they'll just kill you this card's not good I think we're just going to take the Golden Egg. It's just such a good combo with Emery. And, uh, yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> I just had to get that out of my system. And now, very easy Merfolk Secret Keeper. We can mill ourselves. We can also get into a deck, if we can get enough Merfolk Secret Keepers, uh, or a couple didn't say pleases, where we can mill our opponent out, potentially. Uh, but I think mostly we're going to mill ourselves to work with our own Emery, our own um, potential recursion. There is a very late Merchant of the Veil, but I think just getting heavily into blue, he more heavy into blue is really nice, because then we can start triggering the Adamant cards. Okay, there's a Didn't Say Please. I don't really want to take that, but it does work nicely with Into the Story a little bit, because you do mill your opponent out a little bit. So I kind of want to get one. I think it's better than the Tome Raider. Tome Raider's just not going to do much for me. Okay, I, I guess if you keep forcing it down my throat, I'll take Tome Raider. We're going to be heavy blue, so we're not going to want once in future. And now there's an Eye Collector. I don't think we really want that, but okay, we'll take it. Okay, let's see how Pack 2 looks. This card is not good in Limited. You just never can use 7 mana on, like, a single spell. Order of Midnight is quite nice. Bognaughty is good in, like, black-green specifically, but we're not really in that deck. I think that Order of Midnight is just really good. If we mill ourselves, we can get back stuff. And it's just a great card. Reef Soul is also really premium removal, but I think Order of Midnight is just better. Um, we already talked. Bartered Cow is a card you don't really want to be playing in your white decks. It just doesn't line up with what white's doing usually. Um, I think Rose Throne Alkalite is quite good. Insatiable Appetite is pretty scary, so you need to be aware of this card. I think we just take Order, and then we would have taken Reef Soul, and then we'd probably take, like, Bog Naughty, but it wouldn't be good. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy taking the Order. I think we're moving towards black, blue-black, even though we did get this glass casket. Turn to a pumpkin is quite nice, especially because we're going to have a very heavy blue deck, so we're going to be getting this a decent amount of the time. Henge Walker is solid as well, 3 mana, 3, 3, a decent amount of the time. Signpost Scarecrow, um, solid enough, especially if you're trying to enable some adamant stuff. I think Castle Garen brings okay if you're a green deck, but not super high priority. One card I do want to talk about in particular in this pack is Steel Gaze Griffin. And the thing about Steel Gaze Griffin is it looks like it would be good in this type of deck. You're like, wait, you can turn it on with Into the Story and stuff like that. But essentially, in this type of deck, I'm not looking to attack. I'm, I'm looking to draw so many cards that I just pull so far ahead of my opponent, I assemble like some kind of loop with Emery, maybe, or something like that, and I just win the game that way. With Steel Gaze Griffin, 
what you want to be doing is attacking because it only has the power usually on your turn and a 5 mana 2-4 blocker is not very good it's only really as good as an attacker when it's a 4-4 so I tend to avoid that type of card I don't really want heraldic banner we're just going to take the turn to a pumpkin pretty easy pickup oh my gosh this card is disgustingly broken this card is so good it's not even funny like maybe it was just the deck I had but I feel like this card is just dumb like you your opponent all of a sudden has to have a way to trade. Like, you can play a Fierce Witch Stalker, which is a 4-mana 4-4 trample. No other color can compete with that. And then you just play Keeper of Fables, and they just are screwed. You're just drawing so many cards. Um, is it too late to switch colors? Kind of. I really just want to get this Merfolk Secret Keeper, because I think I want to be on the mill plan. Because I can mill them for... If I have this card, I can mill them for 4, 8 potentially bounce it back to my hand, mill them some more, and then I have this to mill them 11, and I only have like 9 or 10 draws in my deck, and then I can just mill them out, which seems really good. So I really want to get this card. We're not playing Beloved Princess. We're not playing Glass Gas. We're just playing Blue Black right now. We're not playing Eye Collector. We're not... Yeah, we're just going to take the move from our Fox Secret Keeper. We're not going to be moving into a green deck at this point, I don't think. And now... Hmm. I like Profit. I really want to get this Profit because it works well with Emery. And that's pretty important to me. Shepherd is a pretty good card, though. Um, it's basically a 2-for-1 a lot of the time. Uh, one second. Ah. Ah. Sorry about that. One second, sorry. Okay. Basically, um... It's just a very good card because you're going to be bouncing your own stuff. A lot of the time, it's going to be under an enchantment, uh, or they're going to be targeting it with removal, and you just get a lot of value that way. Um, so you bounce your own card that's under a trapped in a tower or under the claustrophobia or something like that, and you just get a lot of value. And then you have a 3 1, and there's some adventure synergies. So just a good card. I think this is, Curious Pair is more of a black, gr a green, gold card because that's the only real color where you really care about food like completely. Rose Thorn Acolyte's great. Fierce Witch Stalker's great. Um, Queen of Ice, I think, is a sleeper card. It doesn't look absurd on its surface. They're like, oh, 3 mana, 2, 3 with like a marginal upside. But the thing is, in an aggressive deck, your opponent just cannot block this card if they do, can't kill it. Like, if they have a 1-4, normally that would deal with a 2-3 quite nicely. It doesn't deal with Queen of Ice. If they have a 2-3, if they have a 2-4, if they have a 2-5, if they have a... There's just so many stat lines that don't match up with this well, and then you can sometimes just use it to close the game, and I think this card is quite good. We're not going to need a second mantle. I think we're just going to need the Prophet. We're not really an aggressive deck, so we don't really want Queen of Ice, but Prophet of the Peak can really be nice, especially with our Emery. So, pretty nice pickup. We could consider playing another Didn't Say Please, just to make sure we mill them out, but I don't think we want it. I think we'd rather have a Malevolent Noble, just as another 2-drop. There's also Cauldron's Gift, but we aren't really reanimation as a deck. There's a Mistford River Turtle. But that's not really where I want to be. Let's just take the Didn't Say Please. I think we'd rather have cheap creatures that are blue because getting early black mana might be tricky. And now there is a Crashing Drawbridge, which we can play potentially. So Tiny is actually perfect for this deck. Never mind, we're taking this 100%. Um, it's just we don't care about attacking because we're trying to mill the opponent out. Um, so just using So Tiny as a minus 2, minus 0 in the early game that scales and makes it so your opponent can't do much later is just super good. Moonlit Scavengers is also a card that's probably going to be pretty good in our deck because we have some decent amount of artifacts, but I'm pretty happy to get in so tiny. And now there's a Hypnotic Sprite. This card is fantastic as well. Um, let's see. We're going to take out Tome Raider for now because card draw is not even that good in our deck because if we cycle, it means we're more, more likely to deck out ourselves. Hypnotic Sprite, 2 mana, 2, 1 flying is already a good card, and then you can get, have another counter spell. So we can now have 3 counter spells, or we could maybe even take out, didn't say please. Uh, I also don't mind Mystic Sanctuary, as we're going to be heavy, heavy blue, and that means that we're going to be able to gain uh, this ability a lot of the time, which means we can buy back into the story, we can buy back, um, like, didn't say pleases, and turn into pumpkins, and stuff like that. I like Ventress Palette in a decent amount as well. I think Hypnotic Sprite's just the best card in the pack. Um by a decent margin, so we're just going to take that, but it is definitely, they're both pretty solid cards. <laughs> There's another Revenge of Ravens. Like, we literally don't care about the damage in our deck. We're just going to take a Garen Brig Paladin, and we're not going to play a double black card. Garen Brig Carver. I think, actually, never mind, we're going to take the Tree Folk. Tree Folk's better and more annoying. 
And now, since we've now committed to being a mill deck, with now that we have two secret keepers, we really want to get a runaway together so we can start balancing our own secret keepers. But I, I wouldn't mind picking up an opt. I think Wishful Merfolk's a fine pickup as well. So yeah, let's just pick up the Wishful Merfolk. Get the uh, extra defensive stats. Not much to do here. We're not going to be playing Witch's Cottage. Ooh, Mantle of Tides. We're going to just take the Queen of Ice now. I mean, it's still going to be solid. Even on defense. Turtle. Nice. Eye Collector. Sure. Oh my god. Well, this is the benefit of playing a monocolor deck. Uh, we're switching to white. This card is absolutely disgusting. Having a Wrath in this type of deck is so good. And uh, Realm Cloaked Giant is going to be a premium card for us. Um, it works so well with Order of Midnight because you can get it back. I know we're not playing Order of Midnight anymore. We're playing, we're playing our white cards. What am I saying? We're playing our Glass Casket and our... We don't even have another white card because we've been taking black cards. But yeah, this card is just so good. It's This is the, the payoff for being a monocolor deck, essentially, at this point. Like, we have so many blue cards that we can just switch to this. We have Into the Stories to find them sooner. Just a fantastic card overall, and uh, very happy to have it. And then we can mill this Merfolk Secret Keeper, and then get rid of this Didn't Say Please. And Bob's your uncle. This card's also quite nice. Uh, I think this card's better than it looks. Essentially, it's a two-for-one, because you take your opponent's best card out of their hand, and then you can play that card. And if they don't have a good card in their hand, you get it from their graveyard. So it's not the two-for-one, but then you get a really good card. Um, so Covetous Urge is quite nice as well, but we just really need... The, the board wipers are just going to be amazing. So we'll take that and then wheel the Secret Keeper. But after that, I think I would probably take Urge over... Actually, I'd probably take Order... Yeah, I'd probably take Urge over Order of Midnight. And yeah, the rest of the cards in this pack, I've already talked about most of them. A Spore Cap Spider's pretty good. Fell the Pheasant, I've actually been main decking and been pretty happy with it. Just does a lot of work against the, the Flyers that you're afraid of. But yeah, we're going to take the Realm Cloak Giant. Oh man, Return of the Wild Speaker. Garrick is free. I'm so happy. Um, in this pack, we already have two into the story, so we don't really need another one. I think we just take the Corridor Monitor. Um, it's just a uh, two mana 1-4. We have already got a, a, two o fours a couple of other early creatures, so maybe we don't need to prioritize that, and we'd rather just get a runaway together, but I kind of just like... <sighs> we don't. We definitely don't need a third into the story. We're not really looking to play the Mistford River Turtle either. Oh, there's Scalding Cauldron. Never mind, we're going to take that. Scalding Cauldron is such a good combo with Emery because you can just cast it every turn. So yeah, we're just going to take the Scalding Cauldron. That's just a good loop to have access to, and then we'll see what comes back. Maybe we'll get one of these two back. I almost didn't see the Scalding Cauldron. That would have been bad. Okay, now this is a interesting pick because there's a Covetous Urge, but then there's also a Charmed Sleep. Covetous Urge, just a lot of value. We already kind of have the value covered, though, so I think Charmed Sleep is the more responsible pick. We just need to have ways to interact with stuff once it's hit the board, and we have Glass Casket and Realm Cloak Giant so far, and that's it. And I guess Queen of Ice in a way. But we're just going to take the Charmed Sleep. We just kind of need it. And now there's another Scalding Cauldron. Perfect. We don't really want the Lonesome Unicorn. We're just going to take the Colorless card that combos with our Great Rare. And now there's a Reeves. Oh, we're not white. I keep forgetting that we're not a black deck. Bartered Cow, not really where we want to be. There's a Tome Raider. There's an Opt. I don't even know if we want the Opt that we already have. It can help us find our Realm Cloak Giant sooner. There's also a Forever Young. Oh, no, we're not black. We're not black. Why do I keep thinking we're black? I don't like the Tome Raider here. I think we're just going to take the Opt help us find our stuff more easily. And Merfolk Secret Keeper did not... Oh, this isn't on the wheel. This is just another Merfolk Secret Keeper. I think we'll just take it. We need early defenses, and this is a great card for our deck. And nothing else really seems appealing. The card that actually gives all of our stuff extra toughness might have been a decent card to pick up. Definitely picking up the So Tiny now. We don't care about the aggressive strategy. We just want to be early defenses. Early defense is the name of the game. Frogify is interesting, but I think we'd rather just get a runaway together. Um, we can use it to reset our Realm Cloaked Giant. Um, we can reset Queen of Ice. We can just have a bounce spell for if they have some scary things. Frogify is interesting, though. Maybe we do just want to turn things into 1-1s. One -ones. Man, this is so tricky. So normally Runaway Together is best in a tempo deck, and we're not really a tempo deck. Like, we never really tempo them out, ever. Yeah, let's just take Frogify, even though it's not a very good card. We just need ways to interact, and uh, Frogify is a way to interact. And the Merfolk Secret Keeper came back. Perfect. And 
Now, corridor monitor came back. I think we'd rather have that than run away together, honestly. We already kind of have turned into a pumpkin for that effect. Hmm. Like, when am I ever bouncing stuff? I guess I could bounce my round cloak giant, but I already have... What do I have to combo with? I guess Runaway Together is probably solid. I already have four copies of this 04, so it's kind of a similar effect. Yeah, let's just take the Runaway Together. And now Mystic Sanctuary came back. That's fantastic. That's an easy pickup. Even though we don't have a ton of instants and sorceries, it's going to be basically free in our deck to play. And now we get the Unicorn, sure. Jousting Dummy, don't really want to play it, but you know. Wow, last pick Gingerbread Cabin. That's interesting. Well, we went from a basically mono. Um, I basically switched from a mono green deck to a mono blue deck. So let's see how we want to change these things up. Um, we don't really want any of these white cards. We don't really want any of these blue cards. How many cards do we need to cut? We need to cut three. Let's look at our curve. Hmm. So we'll definitely cut one off. We don't need that many do nothings. We don't really want Mantle of Tides. Um, like it's not really a great defensive card. It's more of like a card that's really annoying on offense. We already have enough combos with our Emery that we don't need it. This opt is definitely on the cutting block. Okay, this this is not going to be a nine seven split. <laughs> oh, definitely not a nine seven split. Opt could be on the block. I think we're just going to cut the opt. And then we will run, let's see, we only have two white in our deck, two white cards, this one and this one. But they are double white, so we're going to have to run, hmm, six planes. Hmm, we really want to have all of our colors really early. We're going to run six planes, ten islands, that's seventeen. We have so much card draw and so much to do with our mana that maybe I could run 18 lands. Hmm. Maybe we don't want Queen of Ice. It's more of a, it's more of a tempo card. How are our creatures looking? We only have 10 creatures. But there's removal. Maybe we don't need Profit of the Peak. It's kind of just expensive, even though it is a nice little combo with Emery. We got better combos with Emery. So we can cut that for an opt. Just to help our early game. Help us find our Realm Cloak Giant. Hmm. You know, I, I like the Profit. I think it's going to be okay. Okay, this deck seems solid to me. We do need double white for our Miss Cloak Giant. So I kind of want to go up to seven. Maybe I just run 18 lands. Yeah, let's just run 18 lands. We're not going to run out of stuff to do. I need to have seven sources for my double white card. That is going to do it for the deck build. This is our final deck. Um, I might make some changes as the draft goes on just to see how things go. But so far, it seems, I mean, so far by, in, by so far, I mean, I haven't played with it yet, but it seems like a pretty good deck and I'm very excited to try it out. Maybe this Queen of Ice should be something else, but we'll see. And I hope you stay with me for the matches. One, we will play first with our mill deck and we're gonna keep we have a lot of lands in this hand but you know it's fine we have a bunch of lands in our deck in general I forgot about golden egg this actually kinda makes me less likely to want to play the 18th land just because golden egg can help us fix for our white mana okay pumpkin we're not going to play the Wishful Merfolk right now. We're just going to draw through our deck faster because Wishful Merfolk doesn't block the Fairy Guide Mother anyway. Oh, hello, Lurker in the lock.
We'll play the Merfolk. Trades with Charming Prince. Ah, Charming Prince. My beloved Prince. Oh, don't do me dirty. Don't hit me. No. Okay. Brutal. Charming Prince is annoying. As is Fairy Guide Mother. Okay. We're going to turn one of these... Actually, we're not going to turn a Guide Mother into a pumpkin. We're going to turn it into a frog. Just slows down their clock. Stops any irritation. Let's see what we will. No! Our best card. We don't have any ways to get it back, which is also sad. What you got for me, mate? Okay, perfect. cast this get all the value in the world we can even start doing it to gain three life a turn which is kind of sweet okay what we're going to do here is we're just going to mill the opponent for four And then next turn, if we do care about something that we need to counter, we can, like, end of turn bounce it. Sure, Foulmire Knight is not a card I care about right now. Because it does not hit very hard. They have 23 cards left in their deck. Oathsworn Knight. Okay, we're going to pumpkin that one. So we're going to bounce this end of turn and counter it on the way back down. And then we can have this trade off with the fairy godmother, guide mother. Unless they play something better this turn, in which case we can just use the fairy guide mo the mother thing now. Oh yeah, we'll counter that. I stop in there and step to sacrifice the golden egg. My turn. I think we're just going to sow tiny the Oath Sworn Knight. And we'll sack this to. So 
I take one? I'm fine with this. Sure. I'm just going to gain three life. Once I start finding the lightning bolt card, then it's going to be really good. They have 11, 17 cards left in their deck. How many cards do I have left in my deck? 18. Yeah, so I can't mill myself. I have to mill them. This is so great. I think the mill deck... I kind of theorycrafted this deck being a thing. But the fact that it actually works is awesome. We're actually netting a life a turn, which is awesome. They put two on the bottom. Okay. Glass casket. Sure, we'll take care of Foulmire Knight. Actually, we could take care of Guide Mother. Yeah, that's probably more irritating. So we have 16 cards in our deck, and they have 12, so we're still ahead of the game. Oh my gosh, that's a good draw. If they do ever go for a combat trick now, they're just never getting through. Block here. Block here. Block here, and we'll take two. Now that we have this card, I kind of just want to turn something into a pumpkin. I'm just going to kill their token. Punished. Hmm. Well, that was punishment at a high level. Have I given out any codes yet? I have not. I actually gave out one code, but I have forgotten to give out another. I'll give another code out after this match. Good idea. Good thinking. So my opponent was playing around my uh, runaway together.
Ah, oh, good luck de penetrating my defenses. Oh, this is going to be great. We don't want to bounce any of his adventure creatures or any of the ones that are already neutralized. Get wrecked. Boom! Our opponent scoops it up. Cannot handle it. Oh my gosh. We were totally going to mill him out. That's, this is awesome. This deck actually works. That is fantastic, and I hope you stay with me for the next round. Forgot it was best of three. Let's see. How should we sideboard against this guy? Um, Mantle of Tide seems kind of nice for all of his small guys. Tome Raider should come in. Like it just blocks Fairy Guide Mother and his Falmire Knight. Prophet it seems okay. Honestly, my deck performed pretty much exactly how I wanted it to, so I don't really want to make any changes. But I think that's a pretty easy change, and Wishful Merfolk coming out makes a decent amount of sense to me because it doesn't block fairy guide mother it doesn't really trade well with his creatures hello potato skis welcome 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 you are currently witnessing us milling our opponent out it's glorious the glitchiness of the game is a little bit irritating I will say but I try not to get irritated by things like that Um, we're going to keep this hand. We've got early defense. A little bit of interaction. Just going for it. I respect it. We're just going to so tiny this one. Probably. Ready with Frogify for your next big thing. That thing does not get through my Secret Keeper. One top, one bottom, okay. I do run a lot of lands in this deck, so don't feel bad for me about drawing a lot of lands, because a lot of the cards are lands. I run 18. I think we're just going to shrink the guide mother. We still have Frogify for any like real threats. And now our into the storybook are turned on, so we have a couple of four mana draw fours in our deck. Wow. We have not drawn well this game at all, and we're still crushing our opponent. Look, we've drawn only cards that cost one and two. I guess a lot of our deck is pretty cheap. We're not going to play the Mystic until after we played our draw four.
There we go. We don't want to deck ourselves, that's why we have all these Merfolk Secret Keepers. We're going to draw another four on the, his end step because we didn't want to discard the hand size. We'll let him kill it with a Cauldron. We also have Runaway together. So that card just gets countered. And he can't even use Cauldron to finish off the other one. Always be Millen, the opponent. Ouch. While you're crushing their dreams. So we have 21 cards. They have 13, so we can afford to play this. This deck is unbelievably good. It's like the exact type of deck that I thought Merfolk Secret Keeper would win you the game in. Like, we don't even have to care about winning. We just sit back and mill them. <laughs> yes! Opponent has seen the writing on the wall, or in the metaphorical story, so to speak. That is going to be the match, and I hope you stay with me for the next round. Welcome to round two with our sweet mill deck. We unfortunately have to mulligan, but we'll be able to keep this hand very easily. And I think we're going to get rid of Runaway together. Into the story is a pretty important part of our plan. We have some early defense. We'll get our Scalding Cauldron down. Well, Wishful Merfolk is not going to be able to deal with the Knight. That's unfortunate. Should be able to deal with their 3-drop, though. Yep, it can trade with 7 dwarves. Let's just get rid of the knight now. I don't really want to trade this off for a 7 dwarves because I have so many 0-4s, but I don't want to take needless damage either. Probably going to ping the Fairy Guide Mother. We're going to hold up Turn to Pumpkin, because it just has a lot more potential that way. They could have a Joust or something like that. Or a Combat Trick. Like that. And now they just have this blank, basically. Come on, give me the mill. More lands are fine as well. We're going to keep this around in case we draw our giant. Trade. 
can turn this into a 1-1, one, one, or we can we'll probably just tap it. And then when we draw another land, we can uh, cast our end of the story and draw four cards. Our deck is humming like a well-tuned machine. We'll cast into the story to draw four. And hopefully we draw some, uh... Oh, there's our giant. Nice. We're just going to gain three life this turn, and then see what they play. Because we can take three all day long, pretty much. Happy to help, Wiconson. This will make them overextend into the board, hopefully. Because now I'm only taking one a turn, so I can just sit on this thing forever. You have to make sure you have enough mill that you don't die to your own card draw. So they have 20 cards in their deck, we have 18, but we have three more of these puppies. And once they have six cards in their library, this thing doesn't do any damage anymore. Because it'll get minus something else and minus O. Yeah, minus six and O once they have one more card in their graveyard. So they mill we've milled one, two, three, four, four lands. We don't have any ways to use this food token, so I think we should just sacrifice it to gain some life. Opponent has sixteen and we have seventeen, so now we're winning the mill race. Well that's not cool. But it doesn't even matter. Ah, the outflank. This is basically how I envisioned Secret Keeper playing out. I'm so happy. We're just going to keep making him extend into the board. Okay. Now's our time to kill everything. Never mind, we don't need to use it. <laughs> they
This is absurd. Our deck is just so much better than anything our opponents can ever muster. Like, we have a counter spell. They have four cards in their library. Sure, we'll let that happen. We're going to just use our giant. Uh, yeah, we're just going to use our giant to lock up the game here. It might not be as good. What the heck is that animation? Yeah, our opponent scoops it up. So our opponent is a more aggressively tilted deck. Makes me want to have... I don't think I want the Tome Raider. Mist Ford River Turtle could be decent. Oh yeah, I think our deck is fine. We don't really care about the Mistford. Bring that in. Showing them that we have a board sweeper might make them play differently, but they were already playing pretty conservatively, it seemed like. I don't know. I just want to make sure we don't lose that game to some weird combination of cards, like them having sandbagged three guide mothers or something. Unfortunately, we won't get value out of our Mystic Sanctuary, which is unfortunate, for sure. Drawing all planes is really bad. We only have seven in our deck. This Merfolk Secret Keeper doesn't change the board at all, so we're just going to hold up our sprite. I really wish I had more islands. Pretty happily trade these off. Can't believe we don't have more blue mana. It's sad. I don't really care if they kill this. Okay. Jeez. We're just going to play the O4. We'd rather not take two damage. We don't have any artifacts in our graveyard yet. But now we can block, block. Unfortunately, so tinies are kind of our answer to fairy guide mothers. I don't think it's worth taking two damage to cast this a turn earlier. I don't think.
Nice. Okay, that's a fantastic draw. We've already kind of got them in a spot where they have to overextend. And we're about to draw a ton of cards. Okay. Outflank me, I dare you. I double dog dare ya. Sure. Oh gosh, opponent is so dead. So they have 17 in their deck and we have 16 in our deck. But we still have another secret keeper. No need to take any damage. We're definitely wrathing next turn. They're going to save one of their guys. Oh, they're flinging. Dang, that animation is crazy. I'm glad that I have been... Um, so they have 16 in my, their deck, I have 15 in mine. Just a 7-7 seven, seven Vigilance, no big deal. Three hits and you're dead, this thing can't block. This game is not looking good for the opponent, you could say. So they would go to one. They're gonna have to chump with Sir Sir Allen. I 
I just kill this. This thing can't block. I don't even need to attack with Queen of Ice. We're attacking with this so that even if they do kill the Realm Cloak Giant with a removal spell that they top deck, they still lose. Uh, I am going to be updating, uploading it probably in a couple days, Epic Gerardo. So no need to worry. You'll see the, you'll get to see the drafting portion, portion, and how I kind of navigated my way to get to this deck. It was pretty epic. Not gonna lie, this deck is sweet. Boom. Getting the W with style. We didn't even need mill that time. We just needed our bomb mythic rare that we opened and segued into pack three. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you stay with me for the next round. Hello and welcome to the third round. We're playing against Alias V, who's actually a pretty well-known YouTuber herself. And we are going to mulligan the six lander and keep this one. We've got our Realm Cloak Giant. We're going to keep it and actually get rid of... Didn't say please... I think So Tiny and Scalding Cauldron and also the Giant are just way better. Even if we can't cast the Giant for a while, we definitely want to have access to it over the course of a game. Gonna play a three mana two three. I feel like this deck could maybe play on the draw. I mean, just be on the draw, like choose to go second. It responds to early aggro so well. I think I'm going to start doing that, just be on the draw. We have two get so tiny, we have four zero fours. I'm going to start playing on being on the draw. That's my new, my new goal. Nice, nice. I don't mind milling myself a little bit. Okay, now I'm a little bit sad. We would like to get this into the story back somehow. We have a land, we have a second into the story. Give me a land. I'm just going to keep holding up Scalding Cauldron. I'm 
both mill. That actually helps me. Okay, planes was kind of annoying. I just want to draw it in again. <laughs> that was actually super helpful. Thank you, Eye Collector. Oh, they're putting Sir Conrad back on top. That's so cute. They think they're going to get to draw their Sir Conrad. <laughs> Resolute Rider. Well, that's getting claustrophobia -ed. I kind of want to hit her with the early good game. I don't think her mill deck can compete with my mill deck. Just saying. I'm gonna have to frogify Sir Conrad. Oh, your life total does not matter, my dear friend. Oh no. So we're gonna mill ourselves eight cards here. They have 17, we're going to have 12, but they're going to have one less there. Maybe we can't afford to cast her. Yeah, I don't think we want to cast her right now. So they have, thir they have 12 cards now and we have 16. I do have a Scalding Cauldron in there, but I also will have less cards in my deck than her at that point. <sighs> I want to draw my last Secret Keeper. Oh no, that is my last one. I need to draw my uh, some of my Bounce. I don't want to lose to her having her own secret keeper. cast Emery. I'm too scared. <laughs> if she casts a draw spell, maybe I will. Okay. 
Now that's annoying. I think I'm going to use my giant. From out of the shadows comes the realm cloaked giant. Kill spell? Oh my gosh, that's not going to go well for Alias V at all. Not Alias, yeah, Alias V. There's no way her deck runs mill. Good work. You're at 36. Oh, man. I kind of wanted to kill this, but I don't want them to just play like a 3-3 and then me never draw anything useful. Their exile zone has a creature. Let's see how many lands that they have in their graveyard. They have one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six lands in the graveyard. Nine, 12, 13. So they have a lot of lands in their deck still. They have four lands out of their eight cards. Boom! We got the win. Let's go. Let's move to game two. So they're a much slower deck. So we don't need Wishful Merfolk. And instead we can run... Didn't say please. I still don't want profit. 
we could run opt let's just go the three two just matches up terribly against the two ones <laughs> Man, this is awesome. Our deck is sick. I like how they started to mill both of us, and then, like, my payoffs were just better. <laughs> like, they milled us both, and I had, like, nothing, and then I drew my draw four, and I was like, well, now I win. Just drawing four cards is disgusting. Okay. What's your game? How you been? Nice to know ya. Da 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 dee. Okay, Elias V. Let's see your new sideboard tech. I hope she didn't side in mill. Like, the mill she played was like both players mill. Okay, this is a great hand. Holy hell, this is a great hand. On the draw. I'm going to choose to be on the draw for game three, I think. Oh, we milled the Forever Young. Maybe that's the sideboard tech. <laughs> we'll hold up Forever Young as a, uh, I mean, so tiny as a combat trick, and if they have a, if they have a combat trick. So we need to hit lands, but Emery plus Scalding Cauldron is a nice combo. Once they get to five mana is when we need to start holding up our counter. Oh my gosh. There goes Conrad. Oh my gosh, that was a good mill. So now we can just start waiting and holding up our counter magic and our scalding cauldron. So they scried one to the top, which kind of makes me want to mill it, but not enough to actually mill it. And like blow a runaway together or something. Unfortunately, I'm whiffing on lands, which is really unfortunate, because if I hit lands, I could not possibly lose this game. Because I just draw four and never miss a land drop again. Well, 
Well, that's unfortunate. Now, I have to hold up my didn't say please forever. Though, in a way, that does help me mill them faster. I only have four cards in my graveyard, too. I'm playing your favorite streamer. Well, welcome to the stream, Darylin. Six something. Six, six, six. Heck yes, there's a land. Well, don't tell me anything about her hand or anything, because I don't want to know. I hope I just keep drawing lands. That would be good, because then I could just cast all these spells and win. Can't cast it. <laughs> she does not like my deck as in she thinks it's bad, or she doesn't like the fact that it's just too good. I'm assuming it's a, the too good one. I honestly don't think there's a oh universe where she can win this game, but I, she's also one of my she's like such a positive person. I like I've seen her on the uh, stream things. Yes, good game. Oh, we got the win. Who needs lands? Who needs anything? We just have our little loop, and we are doing well. And I hope you stay with me for the next round. Hello, and welcome to round four. We are on the draw as we want to be, and we're going to keep this hand. With a couple Scalding Cauldrons, we're going to be fine. We just need one land for this hand to work, and I think it is going to work. There we go. Okay, Rimrock Knight. We'll take the Rimrock Knight, please. One Rimrock Knight. I don't really care about this one. I'll just take a couple hits for one. And then I'll just hold up this thing for whatever they want to play. There's a 4-1 haste, so I'm trying to be careful. I'd be down to co-stream. I love collaborating with people. I don't know if that's something that... Um, is a thing that she would want to do though um, because I don't like know her or anything but I do love collaborating with folks Goodness. Well, that's going to get charmed sleeped.
That's why you save the charm to sleep. And that's why you don't use removal on the curious pair. Okay, they have a once in future. That could be annoying. They have an okay adversary. That could be incredibly annoying. Though I do have these cauldrons. I don't really like Death Z Daryl in 666. I'm not trying to work anybody either. I don't like to, um. I like it to be like a two way exchange where both people get something valuable or out of uh, collaboration. I don't like work people or anything like that. Oh, this is funny. Yeah, I'm not letting that live. I'm liking my chances here. So we actually have eight more mil if we like bounce our own stuff. We don't need to do that. Thanks, Darylin, for the follow. I appreciate the support. This game feels really over to me. That's what I love this type of deck for, because I can't really, I feel like I can't really lose. Like, they, the Scalding Cauldron is just holding them back. Sure. They don't seem that aggressive. I could probably afford to run. Uh, maybe they are decently aggressive. I don't know. Like, it doesn't even matter that I draw, I've draw. i drawn, like, not that many spells. Like, I don't need them. I just have these merfolks holding down the fort. And my opponent is just not casting things into this scalding cauldron. There's a skull knocker ogre, that's a problem. Anything bigger than a three power is a problem. We have turned into pumpkin, we have run away together. We can mill them for eight cards. So they're dead in two turns. Oh yeah, that's definitely going to get 
run away together. I don't think I played oh I played one white card. So I know my opponent's entire deck. They have a trebuchet. Trebuchet could be a real problem. Trebuchets are really annoying. Two trebuchets that I know of. Then the slipper's kinda scary. The OK adversary can be annoying. This game is over. I had this cauldron and play the entire game. And on to game two. We know their entire deck pretty much. I think we would like to be on the draw again. And I think didn't say please is going to be important because they have certain cards that we really have to counter. And we don't really need the Wishful Merfolk. Wow, this is really a fun deck to play. This is a great archetype. I feel very proud for kind of like... Like, honestly, I theorycrafted this archetype before the set came out. Like, the fact that you could just play the 04 guy as a way to win the game after you draw infinite cards and uh, because there's the common card like I didn't even need the into the story that's just nice upside like having even the common the one that's draw three scry three essentially is like good enough and then so tiny the claustrophobia there's just so much removal you, having a way to win where you don't have to attack is just so nice so nice ugh ugh What is Nexus Tavern going to have up his sleeve? <laughs> we'll only find out with time. We'll only find out with time indeed. Are we on the draw? Yes, we are. Perfect. We'll keep this hand. It's not the greatest, but... We want to have all the lands we can get. As in, we really don't want to miss land drops. 
And we have it didn't say please for his big four drop. This game is playing out very similarly to the last game. Artifact removal, maybe? Yeah. We're not gonna, we're just gonna take three from this because we really can't afford to get our stuff countered. We're just gonna so tiny it on their end step. We'll take three and then so tiny it. Our opponent doesn't know we have this counter. Weird to do this pre-main phase, in pre-combat. Because now I'll just kill it. I guess there's a plus three, plus three. So that would wreck me. Sure. Slipper's kind of annoying. We're going to get the Rimrock Knight because... Um, the Rose Thorn Acolyte is not going to be able to get past one of our O4s anyway. But now, if we draw an O4, we can stop uh, two damage a turn instead of just taking four over and over. Okay, so we need to draw our draw for a mill guy. There's a lot of things we could draw. But we have a while to draw stuff. I really wish I didn't have to counter this. It's just too much damage. Oh, those are two of the problem cards right there. Huh. Go figure. Now this thing's gar gone, and then my O4 can stop that. This was another card I was kind of worried about, Ferocity. 
because I knew he had some three ones and stuff like that. Hopefully they don't have too much going on. Cause I just need to get my feet under me. Like I know I kept a five lander. Like I'm not disputing that. But I only have drawn I mean I kept a no, what did I keep? I think I might have kept a two lander. Come on, draw four. Frogify is fine. This slipper is really irritating. It makes things terrifying. Cause my opponent could draw like a giant and just kill me because I don't have any blockers. I need blockers! One day. I mean, it's not that unlikely to draw 10 lands in this time period. I just haven't drawn a single creature. Which is actually insane. And they only have 17 cards left. Having a creature in play would make me feel so much safer. I have to respond to the equip. They must have some sort of plan. Our plan is to go for this, and when it doesn't work, we're frogifying. Frogify! Fling? There's a creature. Thank gosh, we just milled the trebuchets. Oh my gosh, that's huge! And we milled a fierce witch stalker. Opponent's also drawn a lot of lands. Come on, draw four. Just be there. Finally. Here's the egg, so I can gain some life. Oh, hello, giant! I needed... I am so happy to see you. Having a turn into pumpkin makes it so I basically can't lose now. Oh my gosh. Finally. I was so on edge for that entire game, and now I can finally relax. 
I have 15 cards, they have 10. Sure. I'm just going to use the giant and flash it back, probably. This animation is so crazy. This is why you play all your lands, by the way, because remember, I was playing all my lands, I had no cards in hand, I wasn't bluffing, because I had into the story in my deck, and I want to be able to cast as many spells as I can after I draw one of those. It's going to be faster than mill, but honestly, they were going to mill out. We'll keep Queen of Ice to tap down any blockers they play. We can get rid of two blockers. Tap, bounce. Or just bounce our own guy to keep him safe. To keep him safe. <laughs> oh, man. Hooray! That is going to do it for round four, and we are headed to the finals. Whew, exciting stuff. Hello, and welcome to the final round. Um, there's only 35 minutes left in the event, so hopefully we can win in time. We are actually going to choose to draw first, because of the nature of our deck. And we're going to keep this hand, because Emery is one of our best cards. And we have plentiful lands and things like that. Okay. Them playing a card like this is a good sign for me. Oh, green-black food. I haven't played against this matchup yet, but it should be really good, I think. Because I just attacked them on an axis they're not ready for. Sure. There's some consideration to milling myself, but I think I just need to get this plan going in case I draw my draw three. Wow, that was a good mill. Epic Downfall doesn't really do much against me, but Savvy Hunter's good. See what we find. Yes! Oh, the cauldron. So good. We did mill an into the store, which is not great, but that does mean if we draw the land later, we can put it on top. Now we just start doing Emery stuff until he kills Emery. Which might just be right now with a bacon to a pie. Oh, is it the guy? I hope it is. The guy that gets like... It's a 5-5. Five five. That card gets wrecked by so tiny. Oh my gosh. I think we're going to frogify it though. For now. We're 
kill the Rose Thorn Acolyte. We could have killed the Rose Thorn and taken a hit for five. Maybe that would have been better. We must make the cat blue to represent us. Hello, frog. This is why Emery is such a fantastic first pick, because then you can just get Scalding Cauldrons and stuff and go to town. Foods shall be made. We're just going to take four here. It looks like they're missing land drops, so we're definitely going to just kill the Rose Thorn. Restrict their mana. So I'm going to shoot it. Play it again. You just really have to play this every turn that you can. And then mill them for four. What do we hit? We hit Squire, another Acolyte. We'll just take another hit for four. I don't think they have a ton of reach in their deck. And now So Tiny is a hard removal spell for something that doesn't have three toughness. Because when it has three toughness, we might as well just kill it. I'm also really glad that I used my Frogify instead of my So Tiny because this thing being a 5 5 means that it would have been a problem. Okay, now I can So Tiny that one because even with the equipment on it, it doesn't get that much bigger. This is just brutal. We're going to wait for them to spend the mana to equip this. We can almost double shoot something. In fact, we actually can double shoot something. I should have played this planes in case they had the discard two card. I'm still getting used to having to play around that. I'm going to double use it to kill this thing. I 
I should have played the planes. Gosh darn it. I told myself I was going to play the planes and then I didn't. We're going to just get the Scalding Cauldron back and play it. We're not going to get worry about getting rid of the cauldron, Curious Pair. Emery has done work this game. I want to draw my draw three, or the land that puts it back on top. I'll double block this probably. Ah, uh, Beanstalk Giant. Gosh darn it, I knew it would come down eventually. I had a feeling there was a Beanstalk Giant. I have ways to deal with it. I have minus sixes. I have my Glostrophobia effect. looking a little bit rough here. I just need to draw four. If I draw four cards, I win. I think. <whistles> That's terrifying. So, so tiny can stop that. I should have played my land. This is ridiculous. No lifelink here. Oh no, there's food. Oh my gosh, such is life.
these were subpar, shall we say. It feels like he ripped like three cards in a row, but we, we got him. We'll get him next game. I'm dead. I can't win this game. He's got too much life gain. Gosh darn it. I thought I had him. I need to bring in my counter spell for sure. Don't really want to bring in just the big guy. We're going to get rid of our um, wishful merfolk. Maybe we want Tome Raider. Probably not though. Ugh. Any game we draw or draw threes, we just basically can't lose. But sometimes it can be a struggle, those games. Basically, our opponent drew just the cards they needed and we didn't. Not to make excuses, of course. I mean, they did definitely played well and stuff. It's just if we'd drawn a little better, we would have won too. We could have won at least. That game was pretty much just Emery keeping us in it while we spun our wheels a bit. Like, if we'd drawn our giant there, we would have won. No question. Opponent has that gosh darn snake. In the bean stocks. Gosh, this hand is so close to good. We have to ship it though. This hand is much better. We're gonna get rid of Frogify. Gosh darn it. We need blue sources. I wonder if we'll get to counter something. It isn't uncommon. This equipment is really annoying against us. We'll counter the egg.
Hopefully they equip to this. So we mailed Paladin at Downfall, Deathless Knight, aw oh, shoot. Deathless Knight is a problem. Gosh darn it. No, I die if I do that. I have to just play this one. And then I have to double chump. Gosh darn it. I think that this is just a bad draw, honestly. I think it's not like a the deck flaw. It's more like I drew not enough blue sources. And we're not out of it yet. We could still draw our giant. Also, this card's really good against us. And maybe we were supposed to mill more aggressively, but honestly, we just got super punished by our one Mystic Sanctuary. Yep, here comes this guy. This card's really good against us. So if we play so tiny onto this thing, we have to play so tiny onto this thing. We still have outs. Never mind, we don't have. Do we have our giant? Don't hit him. Okay, Giant is still in the play as an out. game oh my gosh that was a catastrophe oh man game one we could have totally won and game two we drew quite badly gosh darn it well that was unfortunate but hopefully we have time for another round hello and welcome to the final round for sure we're gonna choose to be on the draw gosh darn it no Our strategy of choosing to be on the draw might be flawed, but it seems reasonable, at least. Thank you so much, Slumlordin, for the follow. I really appreciate it. I think being on the draw is helpful because we have early defense in the form of these Merfolk and Casket and just a lot of early defensive tools. And we want to make sure we hit our land drops.
That's awesome, Slumlord, and I appreciate your support. Thank you. What did we mill? Ooh, innkeeper. We milled four spells. Nice. Oh, Trail of Crumbs. He's just helping me mill himself. Actually, it puts it on the bottom. Never mind. I'm going to counter basically anything here, just because then I get to draw three the next turn, so the play pattern is really good for me. They might just sack eggs, though. <sighs> oh, yeah, that's getting countered. 110%. Four fours are a no-no for me. Nice, we've only milled one land. That's kind of neat. We'll just draw three on our turn. On their turn, I mean. Might as well make them afraid of counters or something. Though maybe they might have counters, so that would have been bad. Whew. I wonder if this is Legend VD. It might be. Ooh. Thank you so much, Ben A. Thank you so much, Ben A. MTG. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. Okay. This thing's a problem, because I don't have any ways to attack it. Why are they Scottish? I enjoy the proper application of knowledge. <laughs> Gosh darn it. The Royal Scions are so good against me. Okay, turn into a pumpkin's good there. Because they can't replay it because they don't have red mana. So, haha. -ha. This time the advantage is mine. Tell Legend VD to play faster so we can finish our match in the last five minutes. Someone, please. We need to know the ultimate supreme YouTube warrior. I'm kidding. He can play however speed he wants. But the ma I think they kick us out in five minutes.
Thank you so much, Ben A. MTG, for your subscription. I really appreciate the support. I know he's going through every line. I've seen some of his stuff before. He's probably like talking through every single possibility. He's going to time out. Gosh darn it. I'm going to get rid of that thing eventually, though. Okay. It's going to be a best of one game at this rate. And now I casket this thing. There's no way he wins this game. Try to cast the Royal Scions again. Make my day! I've got the sprite. It's all ready. Oh, man. We're going to get booted out. Oh, my gosh. Do I care about that? Probably not. I'll probably just shoot that on his end step. With the Scalding Cauldron. No! <laughs> We're going to get kicked off in four minutes. Oh, man. So he's just drawing a bunch of cards. So he has 13 cards in his deck, and I've only drawn one of my merfolks. It's hilarious to watch on dual screens because I'm just like raging. I, I'm not actually raging. I'm just like, no, just play your spells. I want to finish the game so I can say I 5 0 He's like, hmm. I'm sure he's just talking through every single play. I can do this. I know that's what he's good at, though. He loves talking about his stuff. I don't begrudge him that. I just want to finish this game because he's going to get decked out and it's going to be fantastic. Hooray! Let's go. Ha ha! Yes! We have done it. I bet you he was talking about Hypnotic Sprite, too. Aw, thank you so much, Legend VD. I like it. I can't wait. I honestly cannot wait. One second. Get wrecked. This is sick. Oh my gosh, the plays, the lines, all of the plays. <laughs> oh man, it is pretty gross, isn't it? Pretty disgusting. He's just... Yes! Oh, and the game is over! Oh, yes. This is good. Oh, man. Nice. <laughs> oh, gosh. The game is over. Let's go, and I will take out... Honestly, I kind of need the merfolk to be able to attack him. Get rid of Frogify, maybe. Oh, man. Are we going to have time to finish this game? I don't think so. There's like one minute before we get booted off. But we did win. So...
And I think I have a really good matchup against his deck. I wonder if it lets us finish the match. I hope they let us play it out, because then I would win 2-0, and it would be great, hopefully. Oh, man. Or I want to win 2-0. I wonder if he even knows I'm a YouTuber. Like, that's the thing, because he's, like, ten times bigger than me or something. Some, like, multiple like that. It's, like, not, like, an absurd multiple, though. It's probably 10 times, maybe 15 times, 12 times. I think he has about 30,000 subscribers. I'm not sure, though. I haven't checked for a little bit. Maybe he's got more. I wonder if he'll choose to draw, because he knows I chose to draw. I played against Death Sea earlier, Slumlordy. I played against him many times. Well, this is unfortunate. Going to five is not going to work. We're just going to draw some lands. Boom! He concedes! Victory! I don't know if he conceded or it kicked him out, but anyway. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know if he conceded or if it kicked him out. Oh my gosh, what a legend. And that is going to do it for this draft video. We made it to maximum wins with our sweet mill strategy. If you did... Make it all the way till the end. Oh, the timer got him? That's so funny. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. That is going to be do it for this draft video. If you did make it all the way till the end of the video, be sure to type down in the comment section down below hashtag mill power or hashtag uh, mill victory to let me know you made it all the way till the end of the video. Remember to hit that thumbs up button if you would like to see uh, support my content. Um, if the video gets to 50 thumbs up, I'm going to post another Throne of Eldraine video tomorrow. If you want to make sure you get that notification when I post that video, be sure to subscribe and click that bell. Subscribing is a great way to join our community here on YouTube. And if you would like to catch me streaming live i stream on twitch.tv slash nikolai bolas you can find a link to that in the comments down below um but yeah that is going to do it for this draft video if you would like to support my content you can do so by uh using the affiliate link when you're buying cards throne of eldraine cards the link gives back to me as a creator and uh it's on tcg player which is the website i personally use so i recommend using that link if you would like to join support me directly uh you can do so by subscribing with twitch prime or just normally onto my twitch stream um Twitch Prime is included with Amazon Prime, so it is a uh, free subscription uh, to Twitch Prime. And it is a free subscription if you have Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime, which many people don't know about. So you just head on over to Twitch, click two buttons, and you're helping support my content. And then finally, if you would like to give back directly, you can do so via the Patreon, patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. I post bonus content over there every single week. I'm going to be posting a tier list for Throne of Eldraine, all of the cards ranked in grading scale and stuff like that for all of my patrons. So if you want access to that type of content and other cool rewards, be sure to check out the Patreon. Uh, one of the rewards you get at the $10 per month level is you get to be put in the credits of my video. So thank you so much to everybody that supports at that level and supports at all levels on the Patreon. I really do appreciate your support. That's going to do it for this draft video. I'm loving Eldraine so far, and I hope you're getting ready to crush your own drafts and pre-release. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time.